Mario Paint. Draw and make music. Only on the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Hi everyone, I'm Tyler, and welcome to another episode of Player One Start. Today we're going to talk about Mario Paint for the Super Nintendo. The Super NES Mouse was originally released in 1992 in Japan and in other regions later that year. Originally designed for use with the game Mario Paint, the Super NES Mouse was sold in a bundle with the game and included a plastic mouse pad. Soon after its introduction, several other titles were released with mouse support. Getting a look at the mouse itself, it actually sits very comfortably in the palm of your hand. It has the two clicker buttons in the front that are different colored to make them stand out a little bit more, and mine still has the protective cover on the back. It uses a standard trackball that was common in the 1990s. As you can see, it's seen better days, so I'm going to go ahead and give this a good cleaning. I then also decided to give the plastic trackpad a thorough cleaning as well. It was actually easier said than done, as some of these marks were very stubborn and didn't want to come off. The Nintendo logo also raised some difficulties, as it is embedded into the plastic, so it looks like something either white out or something has gotten in there. I was later convinced that this was white out because underneath it there was some permanent marker residue, and this easily came out with some alcohol. And here's the Nintendo logo all cleaned out. Next, I decided to turn my attention to the trackball. Now these usually get clogged up with dirt and dust, and so I decided to take this apart just to see what it looks like inside there. And yeah, take a look at this. This, all of that gray line there is just dirt and dust that is gunked up and built up on the inside of this. This needs to be cleaned out. I used a combination of a flathead screwdriver and a Q-tip with some alcohol on it, and that came right off. Look at how clean that looks. Now this will definitely work better than it did before. And I decided to give the ball a thorough cleaning. Look at how dense this ball is. It doesn't even bounce once. Anyway, now that it's all cleaned up, I can put this back together. The plastic is still a little bit yellow, but I'm not going to worry about that because, well, it doesn't really bother me too much. Alright, one other thing I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to use some of these. These are Velcro ties that you can put around cables. And because I'm going to be sticking this in a drawer with a whole bunch of other controllers later, I want to make sure that this cable stays tied up and does not get tangled up with all the other controllers. So you put this around one end, wind up the cable, and there you go. Alright, let's go ahead and try this out. Now this was tricky to capture, but I was able to get the mouse and my screen captured at the same time. Let's go ahead and swap the view so you can see the screen a little bit bigger. And here's the iconic opening of Mario Paint. And I always enjoy the tricks that Mario does when here not paying attention to the screen. So Mario Paint was originally released in North America on August 1st of 1992, and I remember getting it around that time. This was the first experience I had with a mouse, as well as any sort of paint or drawing program. Mario Paint offers a lot of different features, so let's go ahead and get started and show you what some of those are. Yeah, I'm not sure what this opening animation is, but I guess it's a cool way to begin the game. Alright, and here's the main menu. This is what you're greeted with every time you boot up the cartridge. And of course I'm going to do the standard drawing right off the bat and just say hi. And there are several ways to erase your work, but uh, I just went ahead and used the eraser on this one. You can use the paintbrush to automatically fill up the entire screen with a color, although this does take a while. Yep, quite a long while indeed. There we go. 
Alright, and I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up here, but I'm gonna go ahead and create a little logo for my channel here. Alright, and that's with my lovely handwriting. So this is just one way you can create um, a logo in Mario Paint, but I'm actually going to try a different way as well. So let's go ahead and get rid of this. And here's another way. This actually works out a lot slower than drawing it out, but I think it looks a little nicer because then you don't have to deal with my handwriting. So I'm going to show you this first in real time. You have to go through the upper and lowercase letters. And I'm going to try to spell out the name of my channel. Thankfully, though, you don't have to watch this whole thing in real time, so I'm going to go ahead and speed it up. Alright, and that actually looks like the font I usually use for my channel as well. And again, I'm going to use the paintbrush to fill up the entire screen. I like how the paintbrush does a little dance when he's doing it. And as you can see, just like in Microsoft Paint, it doesn't fill in the letters automatically or anything that was white, so you actually have to go back in and fill those in separate. But I decided to make the background black and the letters white. So I went ahead and did that. And now I'm going to show you some of the stamps. Stamps are basically sprites, and you can input as many as you want into any drawing, because once you stamp it, then it becomes part of the background layer, I guess. So there's an unlimited number of stamps you can use. And here are just a few that I chose. Alright, that looks good. And one thing you can do, I'm going to show you some of the animation effects. I think that one takes about the least amount of time. But you click the dog to undo things in paint. So I can bring it back and then I can erase it again, only this time a different way. I think it's interesting how much time that Nintendo spent animating all the different ways that you can erase something in here. It just shows the attention to detail that they put into this game. This one is my favorite. Kind of glitches away the screen. And the rocket ship is probably my close to second favorite. And of course I can bring that back again with the dog. And let's go ahead and go to the next one. This is a stamp, and this is basically your own way to create a sprite. So I'm gonna go ahead and create just a standard smiley face here. And yeah, let's make him dripping blood out of his mouth. <laughs> I was gonna try to make a tongue, but it looks like dripping blood, so yeah, whatever. And now let's go ahead and go back in, and you can find your stamp in the Stamps menu. However, for some reason, it wasn't letting me stamp it. I don't know if I did something wrong or if I wasn't ready yet, but anyway. Uh, here's the animation pane. I'm not really going to show this because I'm not good at animating. And here is the music editor, which has now become famous due to YouTube. A lot of people have spent a lot of time using these built-in sounds to create their own music. But keep in mind, this was the most accessible MIDI editor that any of us had. So a lot of people spent a lot of time on this. I can only show you the pre-built-in music because um, I'm not very musically talented, so I can't create my own on here. Of course, we all had fun trying to create our own melodies out of this anyway. Alright, and here's the mouse speed that I've been looking for the entire time. <laughs> I like to keep mine on cheetah, so that way I don't have to move the mouse 50 times to get somewhere on the screen. And here's a nice little area where you can just present your message on the screen. This reminds me of a cartridge on the Magnavox Odyssey 2. Alright, and now let's go to the greatest game on here, which is the Fly Swatter game. 
Oh my gosh, I spent more time than I care to recall playing this game. I remember getting quite good at it after a while, but as you can see here, I've kind of lost my touch. It's been a while since I played this game. You start out with these smaller mosquitoes, but as you play through the game, you actually get bigger bugs that have different abilities, and eventually you defeat a boss at the end. So as you can see, it's counting down every time I actually swap one. Let's get this guy, come on. Man, I used to be so much better. There we go. <laughs> Alright, yeah, and you really want to hit these gold flashing bugs before they explode because then they'll shoot out little tiny mosquitoes that you can't hit. And every time you hit a hand, you get another life. And I'll go ahead and show you my run through level one of this game. Alright, so what are my thoughts on Mario Paint? While this game was actually really fun when it came out in the mid-90s, I really enjoyed playing this game and in fact there's a lot of nostalgic still brought up today because it was the first. The first time I ever held a mouse in my hand and controlled a screen with it. When I learned how to use a Windows 3.1 computer at school, I actually had to learn all the keyboard shortcuts for it. So even playing solitaire, I had to use the keyboard, press the enter button to grab a card, use the arrow to move the cards around. And when I tried this mouse out, I thought this is a perfect solution for all those clunky keyboard controls. But if you didn't grow up with this game, the nostalgia is going to be lost on you. And what you're left with is a very basic paint program in which you can't save your pictures unless you have some sort of digital capture. You have a very basic animation studio and sprite builder which you can't save. Every time you turn it off, it's gone. Same goes for your musical creations, which again is another tedious task. At the end of the day, the only game I still enjoy playing on this as much is the Fly Swatter game. So this game was not included on the Super Nintendo Classic, and that was typical of anything that required one of the accessories to the Super Nintendo. The Super Scope was also not included on that, but I think that's because the Super Scope requires a CRT television to work. Now that said, I believe there are certain emulators that can actually still use this device, so it may not be necessary to have the original hardware to use this game, but I definitely recommend it. I mean, you might as well get the full experience with it. Now the game itself is not too expensive, however the mouse may be hard to track down, and when you do get it, make sure it still works. As I showed you before, it takes a little bit of maintenance to keep this mouse going, but that's true of any mouse of the time period, so you gotta pick and choose. 
All right, well that about wraps it up for this video. Remember, if you like what you see, please click on this subscribe button. Again, I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and stay tuned because I have more content coming. I'm going to go ahead and get out of the way so you can see other video suggestions. Thank <laughs> you.